Hey, it's Harley here at Big Deeds. All right, guys, I'm trying to spread the vibes and trying to help you live your lives to the fullest. All right, guys, I'm here at the house where I grew up in Flower Valley. Gorgeous place, a magical place full of flowers. Um, This is the house where I grew up. And there are a lot of cool stuff. This is one of my favorites, the bench press. Oh, it is a vibe. I just get on that bad boy and crank out sets. It's great. I got that for Christmas uh, probably two years ago. Um, there's a treadmill, ping pong table, and that's the pool table. You see it back there, foosball table. Here's our TV where we watch all our favorite movies and stuff. Just got back from Canada, had a great time. Obviously, I faced a lot of troubles. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of tough situations, you know, getting caught at the border and stuff like that. But we got through it. I had a fantastic group of people, a fantastic group of kids. They were some vibes. They were some good vibes. Like They were literal vibes. Like, I love those guys. They're awesome. And I learned a lot from them. And I just really like to lead people. I want to be a leader. So I want to lead you guys. I want to lead you today. I want to lead you to be the best versions of yourselves. So today I want to talk about willpower. So there's a lot to know about willpower. One of the greatest things about willpower is um, you can recharge it. You can up re-up your levels of willpower by eating, by sleeping, and by taking a break. And I get a lot of this information from... Uh, my man at Improvement Pill. That's a great YouTube channel. You should check it out. He's got a great course called the Tamed Course where he teaches you to uh, develop ha habits. Just search Improvement Pill. So uh, I just wanted to talk to you today about willpower. And willpower is a great thing. And we all feel the ebbs and flows of willpower. It comes and it goes, you know. So, oh, especially after like a certain events, like you go to a college commencement ceremony and you feel energized or you watch a motivational video or a Ted talk and you're energized. You're ready to conquer the world. You're going to wake up at 5 AM every single day and take a liquid nitrogen shower. And you're just going to just blow the tops off the earth. And you're going to write a, a book, a chapter every single day. You're just going to uh, start a business tomorrow. It's, it's it's just nuts now it like that's not realistic that's just a burst of dopamine that's coming from listening to that college commencement uh ceremony speaker or you know that keynote speaker or that ted talk no that's not lasting so you really gotta work with your willpower so a lot of what you have to do is it kind of uh is the intersection between biology and psychology. So with the biological factors of willpower are sleep, um, recharging your brain by taking a break and eating food. So eating a high glycemic meal where that spikes your blood glucose will give you a short burst of energy. And they did, uh, they found this out with a uh, study where they did a uh, test with different groups one of the groups got a high glycemic meal like muffins, pop tarts. Another uh, group from this study received a low glycemic meal. They might have had eggs or bacon. Slower to digest. Doesn't release all the glucose all at once. And then the other group had no breakfast whatsoever. So this is all, these were all breakfast morning meals. And then they went into their academic studies. And what they found was, is that the group that had no breakfast did the worst. The group that had the um, low glycemic meal, meal did the best. And the group that had the high glycemic meal did in the middle. So what, what that tells you is that the your brain needs glucose. And the high glycemic meal provided that glucose, but it quickly died off. Whereas the low glycemic meal received a constant supply of glucose and the folks that did not receive any breakfast whatsoever, 
they did the worst because their brains did not get any glucose. Now you hear me talking about glucose as if it's a good thing and you know, I'm a keto bro. So yes, of course, you know, um, the, we're talking about standard American diet type people, people who are taking in a uh, standard American diet. These people are not keto adapted. They're not fat adapted, meaning that they're not, their body is not used to fasting. It's not used to using ketones and fatty acids for fuel. It's used to using one fuel source, which is glucose, which is a very short lived, very short lived fuel source. It comes and it goes with every single meal. So obviously this cannot be applied to um, ketonians or folks on the keto diet or keto bros. No, it can't. So the, um, but for those folks, those standard American diet eaters, this was the trend. Basically you need fuel for your brain. Another thing is, is that you need sleep. The, uh, another study, which is mentioned in the improvement pill as well as that first study that I mentioned is where there was a group of, um, judges that were basically either going to give prisoners freedom or keep them in jail. And the, the prisoners that showed up early in the morning had the best chance, like a 65% chance of getting free whether it be for whatever reason it was, maybe they had good behavior or whatever, but the, the hot, the largest factor in determining whether or not they got their freedom was the time of day, not the good behavior, not, um, how well behaved they were during the trial. Um, it was the time of day. The ones that came in early in the morning had a 65% chance of release. Then the, that slowly declined all the way down to 20%. Eventually, the judges had to eat lunch. And then as soon as they ate lunch, it shot back up to 60%. So basically, that shows the interplay between sleep, fatigue, and nutrition in the judge's uh, determination of whether or not these people could go free. The... Um, the ones that came in early in the morning, the judges were not fatigued. They just had had a good night's rest. So they had a good, um, easy determination. Uh, that, well, it was easier for them to determine whether or not those prisoners should be let free or not. And the one when it was later on in the day, let's say right before lunch, when the prisoners only had a 20% chance of getting free, the judges were fatigued and they could not make their decisions as well. So they went with a more conservative judgment, which obviously the more conservative judgment is to keep the prisoner in jail. The worst that could happen is it just affects one person, which is the prisoner. Whereas if they let them free, the worst that could happen is, I don't know, I don't want to bring bad vibes or like maybe a mass shooting or something like that. Sorry, bad vibes. That, But like, that could affect a lot of people. So it could be a lot worse for the judge if they release someone who shouldn't be released than if they kept someone that should be released. So that is definitely a factor. Um, and this shows how these biological factors on the judge's willpower came into play. So, but we will also want to talk, which also they talk in improvement pill about is the, um, the psychological, the psychological factors that are involved in willpower. The first one is chunking. So he talks about David Blaine. David Blaine uh, allegedly stayed in a block of ice for 63 hours. And he did that by just measuring each hour, block by block, just time block by time block. And he was able to go 63 hours because if he told himself, I have to stay in here for 63 hours, his brain would be like, no, no way. I'm not doing that. But if he just said, oh, just one more hour, his brain's like, all right, I can do that. Imagine like, for example, if you had to complete 10,000 steps a day, right? And you told yourself you're going from completely sedentary to all of a sudden going to 10,000 steps a day. That would be almost an impossible feat for you to accomplish. And then... All of a sudden, you're like, all right, let's just break it down. I know that this is so hard for me to accomplish, 10,000 steps. I'm just going to do only 50 steps each day. 
It's not a bad, not a problem. They go walk around the block would do you that. So then you start building it up and building it up. But 50 steps a day, at least you're doing something as opposed to the person who says 10,000. Holy camoli, I'm not doing that. So that's chunky, just breaking it up one uh, chunk at a time. Then another thing is your view of willpower. The way that you view willpower affects how much willpower you have. If you believe that you have more willpower, you actually have more willpower. You, it's almost like you speak it into existence. And this is also shown through science as well. Your belief on how much willpower you have has a direct effect on how much willpower you actually have. It's amazing. So another thing that they uh, showed, especially talked about in the improvement pill is high level thinking versus low level thinking. Low level thinking is the mechanics. Like for example, let's say you want to go to the gym. How am I going to go to the gym? How am I going to fit in my schedule? Um, what are the sets that I'm going to do? What are the exercises I'm going to do? Okay. That's low level thinking. High level thinking is why am I doing this? And what effect is it going to have my life? So more general, less specifics, high level thinking, uh, leads you to having better results. Another thing that we can talk about, which affects willpower is identity. So for example, if you're, let's say you're a cigarette smoker and you say, oh, I have to quit. I gave this up for Lent. Uh, my wife doesn't want me to quit. Those are all negative statements. Those work against you. Whereas if you say, I am not a smoker, I do not, cigarettes are not a part of my life. At that point, you are assuming the identity of a non-smoker, of a healthy person and say, I am a healthy person. Whereas before you are identifying as a smoker that is in a way almost being forced to quit. So that is not what you want to do. You want to identify as a non-smoker. You want to identify as the person that you want to be. Another thing that comes into play is confidence. The more confidence you have, the better off you're going to be. So just try to build your confidence. Know that you are capable of doing things. Read stories about people who who fought adversity, who maybe started their journey at 50 years old or started their athletic career at a, a very poor athletic state. If you're able to develop this confidence that you're able to do the things that you want to do, you will actually be able to do them uh, better. You're actually going to be able to be more likely to do them. So guys, this is me trying to motivate you. This is my me trying to throw science at you. Science that actually will help you to succeed. So obviously I know that um, I, I'm in no position to talk about absolute success, but I've been on a journey. And every day I'm taking baby steps. I'm using that chunking. I'm trying to break it down. I'm using every avenue I can. I know I'm going against uh, adversity. I know that um, I have a long way to go to get to where my dreams are at. And, but I want you to get there. And I want me to get there. I want us to get there together. As Wim Hof says, it's not me go. It's we go. Shout out Wim Hof. Love you, brother. I, I took an ice bath. Almost dropped the phone there. I took an ice bath with that man. I gave him three hugs. He is amazing. So anyways, guys, I love y'all. Go out there. Be nice to people. Shout out Midwestern Method. Uh, subscribe to subscribe for good vibes. Shout out to Amy, uh, who always says that. Um, just you guys are awesome. Just be the best version of yourselves. Just keep improving every day. Never give up. All right. You guys have a wonderful night and um, just spread those good vibes. All right. Peace.